What's up guys, Ron Carter here. And so today what I'm going to be sharing is the conversational framework that I use to get sales online. Now this conversational framework, I've used this when I was a sales rep inside of a coaching company. And really I was kind of like business development rep. So what I was doing was talking with a lot of people every day and getting them onto calls, having those calls with them myself, and then also booking them onto a closures calendar where they would knock down the sale. So I was doing that. Uh, I used this framework when I started my own business and we hit 10K in revenue in the first month and over the first 12 months hit $100,000 in revenue. And so this stuff, it's worked in different applications. It's worked for me to be able to grow my free community. It's worked for me to be able to grow Facebook groups, grow, fa or grow paid communities, um, get calls booked or just get sales directly in the DM. And so that's why I want to share it. I figured it would be helpful for anybody that's looking to do any of those things, right? Um, mainly if you're a community owner or if you are selling digital products or digital services, even if those products are not your own, this is still the framework that I would use and that I have used. So let's just go ahead and share the screen now that we got the, the one minute intro out of the way. So DM sales convo framework. So this is like the, the high level overview of the four stages that happen in a conversation that results in getting somebody to, to do what we want them to do, right? And so it starts off with just having a conversation. We wanna start the conversation, whether that's in DMs, whether that's on Zoom, whether it's in person, you're at the grocery store, right? We start the conversation and then we get the, the second stage is we get permission to sell, which is other words, permission to sell is getting permission to diagnose their problem. So, so many people get into the DMs and they just start trying to diagnose somebody's problem. I've done this before. That's how I know this. Uh, and then the person's like, whoa, like, I don't, what's up with all these questions? I don't, it's not what I'm trying to do. It's like, well, the, the most powerful thing we can do is actually get permission to do that. And they say yes. And then it's like, cool, we are in a sales process and you already agreed to it, <laughs> you know? Um, so then we go through and we diagnose the problem and recommend the solution. So the actual selling is in these last two steps. This first one is just starting the conversation and then we transition. This is, the second step is transitioning. And then we actually go into the actual selling, diagnosing the problem, recommending the solution. And so let's dive into this a little bit deeper so you can see what's happening because this is a high level overview, right? Uh, so we're gonna dive into this a little bit deeper so that we can see exactly what's happening in each one of these steps and, and how I use this. So here is the beginning of the conversation, right? And so there's three different ways that I use to start conversations. And so each one of these blue squares here is one of those different ways. And so number one, somebody could have engaged on a piece of content that I have on any platform, on Instagram, Facebook, on school, as long as there's a way to have a two way conversation on that platform, uh, then you could use this for that, right? So it's engaged on content or maybe they, res they responded to a two step, you know, one of those posts where it's like, um, Hey, I just made. I just made a training video showing the exact framework that I use on how to convert conversations into sales. If you want it, comment your favorite gift below. Like that's an example of one of these posts, which I will probably do on Facebook after I'm done recording this video for this, right? Um, and so they respond to that by commenting, right? And, or there's direct reach out. This is another way to start a conversation, whether I'm directly reaching out to somebody who I think is my ideal prospect or they're reaching out to me because they've been seeing my content, seeing it, seeing it, then they just send me a DM. So when we're going through these stages, let me make my picture a little bit smaller here. So I want you to look at the flow of this first. So it's like people are starting conversations from this area here, this area here, or this area here. We are, right? And if they've engaged on content or we do some direct reach outs or they reach out to us directly, there's a little bit of rapport building, right? 
And this is where it's like, if they just engage with my content, I'm going to say something like, hey, thanks for engaging my post. Like, how's everything going? I look at their profile. But you basically connect with them like a regular human being. You don't just try to be a salesperson. You just, like, connect like you would. Um, think of it like this. If, if you go to a party and you meet somebody of uh, that you're interested in, whatever gender they may be, just somebody that you're interested in, right? And um, and you want you want to take them out. You already know that. You want to like go on a date, just you and them, not be at the party. You don't walk right up to them and say, "Hey, like let's let's get up out of here." <laughs> like you, you, that's not what you do, right? You start conversation. You find mutual interest and common ground, and you start connecting with them. That is building rapport. So that's the first thing you do in these stages here: engage on content or direct reach outs. After you've built some rapport, you can kind of see if they have the problem that your product or your offer solves. You can't see 100%, but you can see a little bit. Like, for example, if like I help people with sales and growing their business, and if I'm talking to other entrepreneurs that sell digital products online, like I can see through having conversation, like, hey, how's everything going with X, Y, Z or with this? I see that you made this offer. How's everything going? Like, like they start telling me and I can, I can kind of see if like, maybe it's not going as well as they want just by analyzing their language. Right. And I don't jump in and try to help them right away. I see that, oh, there might be a problem in there that I might be able to help with, uh, but I'm not even sure yet. So I have to go through this process to find out if I, if I even can. And so that's when we move to getting permission to diagnose. Now, if they responded to a two-step, we do that right off the get-go because they've already said, hey, I want this thing. And uh, so just as an example for you, <clears throat> actually, before I start giving examples, I want to say this. This is a high level overview of this framework. Now, how this works for each offer or for whoever you may serve are the little idiosyncrasies, the little small changes <coughs> of, of what wording you should use for each thing. This is not going to tell you that because I can't do that for everyone. Not in the same video, right? And so how this works is this framework is going to be showing you the information that that <clears throat> that you should be getting from the person and not exactly what questions to ask or exactly what you should say because what you should say may change but the information that you are looking for is going to be the same and so that's why that's all that there is in this um if you do want something that is more specific, more custom for you specifically, that's what we do in my marketing VIPs group. Um, you can hop in there and, and we do this. I'll do this with you and customize everything for you. That's that's what that whole thing is for. But anyways, um, so if we go through here, getting permission to diagnose. Here's an example of what this may look like, right? We find a problem in the rapport building or a potential problem. And then I could say something along the lines of, uh, I could send something your way that'll probably help. I'm letting them know, like, I think th I, th I think I could send something that might be able to help with that. I'm not, I'm not for sure yet. But first, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Question mark. I just want to get better context on your situation that way I'll know whatever I share will help and it won't waste any of your time. So I'm framing this. I'm asking like, hey, do you mind if I get better context on your situation? That way I, I know that I'm sending you something. If I do send you something, I know it's something that will help. That way I don't send you anything that's going to waste any of your time. Usually they're going to be like, yeah, right, like right on. Thank you. Because I know that we've all sat through, somebody has shared, most of us, somebody has shared a webinar with us 
that was totally irrelevant for us and we start watching it and the next thing we know we're like 30 minutes into this webinar and we're like I don't even need any of this stuff and then we like leave and it's a waste of time and most likely the person that has shared that that shared that webinar or that training or that VSL or whatever it was with us they didn't go through this process so they didn't even know that it wasn't relevant for you they're just sending it like hey check this out and it, and we're not doing that um, and usually people are grateful for that. They're like, yeah, thank you for not just sending me some random stuff. Um, and so they'll say yes most of the time. If they're responding, they'll say yes. And this is where it gets interesting because once they give us permission to ask questions to get better context, um, that's when we, we can fully like probe into what's going on in their business or whatever it is that you're helping people with. Uh, so right here, we determine, the next thing that we do is we determine if they're just getting started or how long they've been trying to do X for. X is whatever it is that, that you help people do. Let's say that you're a weight loss coach and you help people get into I, I was trying to think of some sexy wording for it, but I'm not a weight loss coach, so I don't know. You help people get into uh, in, into shape, wrap sexy language around around that here. Um, maybe like you help people get into um, high school shape, the same shape that they were in freshman year of college. Um, get your freshman college body back. I don't know. I'm trying to think of sexy languages or sexy, sexy wording, uh, enticing wording for this offer off the top of my head. But you help people like get into shape and have six pack abs while still eating food that they want to eat. Right. Um, and so I would be asking like, okay, so how long have you been so it looks like you're like really into into fitness or you're just starting to get into it. Like, is, is that a new thing or, or have you been trying to lose weight for, for a while? That's what I would ask right here. I'm trying to figure out if they've been trying it for a while or if they're just starting. And this is really important because if they've been trying it for a while, it's going to dictate the questions that we ask. It's going to dictate the answers that we're looking for. And here's why. If they've been trying to, to achieve this goal for a while, like they're actually taking action and they've been trying, but they're going to have some problems that have popped up. Like if you've been trying to grow a free school community and you have two members in there, but you've been trying it for six months and your community has been active for six months and you're trying to get more people in, well, you've been trying, you've encountered some problems along the way, right? And so if you've been trying the first thing that we do is we talk about the current situation. We're, we try to get more info on like what's been going on currently. Like, okay, so you've been trying to grow a free school community. You have two members. How, how, how many members do you have? Like, that's what I would ask. And they'd be like, oh, we have two members. Okay, how long have you had the community open for so far? Well, six months. Okay, so what things, what things have you been doing to grow the community over the last six months? And then they'll, they'll tell me, and most likely if they have two members and it's been six months, they haven't been doing a lot um, over the last six months at least, right? And but they'll tell me the things that they've been doing, and maybe they're doing a lot of things that are totally irrelevant, right? And this is where, like, you having insight as an expert in what it is that you do really comes into play because you're able to see that as they're sharing this. But what we do is we don't tell them how to fix it right here. Our natural inclination before we get into sales is we go, oh, you're doing this wrong, and so you should do this, this, and this. Like, we don't do any of that. We're just getting the information, right? And once we find out all the things that they've tried, the different things that they're thinking about trying, um, and all the details about their current situation, then we move on to the next thing. If somebody has a paid offer, well, we find out all the details of their offer. Who's it for? What the price point is? What their current revenue is at per month? We want to know, like, how much are you making per month from the offer? 
okay, and like okay, so how many and how many sales are you getting every month? We we want to and we want to be like writing this down so that we remember it. Like I have notes from my last call right here, um, and so that's if you're doing it over the phone. You want to write it down. If you're doing it in Messenger and you're typing it, it's right there for you to um, for you to really be able to refer back to it. So after we understand their current situation, then we go on to like the desired situation. Really easy transition for this is something along the lines of, okay, I mean, it looks like you've been working at this for a long time. I'm just curious, what's, what's like the driving force for this, for you, like specifically? What's got you, like, what's the goal here? Where are you trying to get to? And then once they say the desired situation, it's important to find out why. They say, oh, I want to make money online. And it's like, okay, I got it. Like, I, I totally understand that everybody wants to make more money, right? Like, I can ask anybody in the street if they want to make more money, but, and they'll say yes. But what I'm curious about is why that's important to you. And what would that allow you to do? And then they start sharing how making more money would impact their life. And then we can get a number. This is all desired situation. We can say, okay, well, how much, if they start saying, oh, I'd be able to retire my mom, I'd be able to live life on my own terms, not have to go to work, not have to have a day job. Got it. How, how, how much would you have to be bringing in in personal income every month to be able to make all those things happen? Then, they, then they'll tell you a number. That's the number that they want to get to. And that's if you're selling something that helps them make more money. It's the same thing with weight loss, though. They're like, oh, I want to be able to have more energy, be able to play with my kids, go to the beach and run with them, and be able to surf with my son. He's love, he loves surfing, and I feel like I can't go out there and do it. Okay, well, what, what weight do you feel like you'd have to be at to be able to go do all those things? Then they'll tell you the weight that they want to be at. So anyways, I'm getting really into the weeds here with these examples, but it's just, this is the framework. We want to find out their current situation, and then we want to find out their desired situation. And then the last question is, we want to find out what the main thing that they feel has been getting in the way or stopping them from being able to do it. And this main thing Whatever they say here, this is the thing where you, in your head, you go, does my product or does my offer solve this? Does it solve that main thing? If it does, perfect. That's what you recommend. And you don't need to tell them anything else about your offer. It's like, this is the thing that they said that they need to be able to get the result. They need accountability. They need advice from somebody who's done it before. They need, maybe they just need a community. Maybe they just need to know what to do. Even though you may know that, hey, you need all three of these things. The important thing is we talk about the thing that they said they need. And we don't talk about all the other stuff. We just talk about that thing that they said they need. That's what it has. They, they say, cool. You recommend it to them. They sign up. They get inside. They see that the thing that they needed is there. And there's also all these other, all these other things that are helpful. This is how... You over deliver and you get them the result that if you tell them every little thing that's inside, then they expect all that. Or they might even say, Hey, well, I don't really need all that stuff. I just need this one thing. And so I'm not going to get it because I don't, I don't want to get all this extra stuff. I know I've done that when buying things when somebody did that, did that to me in sales situations. So the other thing that I want to cover real quick here. We talked about if they've been trying for a while, but we didn't talk about what to do or why this is separate if they're just starting. The only difference here is we ask them about the desired situation first, if they're just starting or just learning to do something, because it's natural. If somebody says, imagine this, imagine you tell me that you are just getting started growing a paid community on school. You just started it like two days ago. And I'm like, 
okay, well, how long have you started it? You're like, and then you're like, two days ago. I'm like, well, what are all the things that you've done so far to try to grow this thing? It's like, nothing. I started it two days ago. Like, you haven't encountered any problems with it yet because you're just starting. So it doesn't make sense to try to find problems. That's why we don't talk about the current situation yet. If somebody is just starting something that you may be able to help with, we start asking what their goals are because that's what's really clear for them right now. If they're just starting something, the thing that's clear in their mind is the reason why they're starting, which is their goals, their desired situation, what they want to happen. So we ask them about that. Once we get really clear on that, that's when we move to their current situation. And a really good question for this is, okay, got it. Well, after they say their desired situation, say, okay, got it. So what's going on right now that's causing you to want to go this direction with X, Y, Z? What's going on right now that's got you wanting to start a paid school community? Because now they might start telling you about their unfulfillment in their job or work or other businesses that, there's, that they've had that aren't doing as well and they want to go do this instead. That's their current situation. That's, that's where the pain that they're in right now is. And it's pushing. So they're just starting. We talk about the desired situation. Or we don't talk about it. We find out about it. And then we find out about their current situation. So these two right here are flipped, if you haven't noticed. And this is why we ask this question. Determine if they're getting started or how long they've been trying to do X for. Because it, it lets us know, whatever their answer is, lets us know if we should find out about their desired situation first or their current situation first. And uh, I know this is a really meaty video. I'm hoping that this makes sense. If this makes sense so far, drop a makes sense in the comments. And that's also how I know that you made it to 22 minutes in. And uh, so let me know that um, if it makes sense so far. And uh, yeah, let's keep it going. We're, we're almost through this. So I also encourage you guys to save this. This should be up on you. Even if you're watching this in a different place, the video is going to be hosted on YouTube. So you can open up YouTube and literally click the save button. That way you can go back to it again and again. And honestly, if you don't want to just do this, th this stuff by yourself, um, that's what marketing VIPs is for. You could actually just go into my free group. It's going to be somewhere around here. And, um, and then you can figure it out. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, this is not even to try to promote anything anyways. So anyways, um, here we go. So after we find out the desired situation and their current situation, or either or, we've moved through this process here. We find out what's the main thing. This is the same. What's the main thing that they feel has been stopping, been getting in the way or stopping them? They tell you, they tell you what the main thing is right here, right? Then you want to clarify it. You repeat it back to them. They say, oh, I just, I just haven't been able to find somebody that could actually provide customized, detailed support. Then I would say something like, okay, let's take the example that somebody wants to grow a paid school community. And they have zero members, zero paid members, so they haven't gotten any sales with it. And they want to get to $1,000 per month in recurring revenue, right? That's, you know, or maybe $2,000 per month in recurring revenue. And what that would do for them is it would show them that, that this is real and they could potentially be able to leave their day job if they keep moving forward and making the progress that they've been making. That's all they want. It's not even a huge promise. Um, we found that out, you know, from asking current situation, desired situation. And then I'd say, well, what's the main thing that they f that you feel has been getting in the way or, or stopping you from being able to do this? You see, I just like, you, there's a lot of training on how to do this from a lot of different people. I just feel overwhelmed and I don't have like specific, like step-by-step -step instructions. 
I would say, oh, okay, got it. So, like, the main thing is, like, so if, basically what I'm hearing is that if you had support and specific step-by-step -step guidance, you would be able to get, you know that you'd be able to get to the point where you're making $2,000 a month in monthly recurring revenue from your school, and you wouldn't feel overwhelmed. Am I right? And they're like, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's like, okay, cool. Well, hey, um, I have something that I know would be able to help. Do you mind if I share it with you? And usually here, they're like, yes, pl please. Like, this is what this is what I'm looking for. And so, and here's where you share your offer. You talk, you transition to talking about your offer and you only talk about the one thing that they said that they need. That's it. Okay. Well, actually I walk people through how to get sales and, uh, <clears throat> so that way you can get the $2,000 a month MRR with your school community. And we actually do it by providing customized detailed support. And they're like, oh, that sounds awesome. And then I'd be like, yeah, I, I really feel like this is exactly what you need to be able to get to where, you, where, you, where you're looking to go. And they'd say, okay, well, how much is it? They're going to start asking questions, right? And, and as, at this time, I would just answer their questions. So this is where it gets kind of gray here, right? Because it's like you share your offer with them. They're going to be asking questions about your offer. Um, then you have a link for them to buy it. Or you could recommend booking a call with you. And that way you can give them a kind of like a brief demo of the product. It, it really depends on what it is you're selling. Um, but this is, but by the time we get here, by the time we get here, what has happened is we've taken somebody who didn't even know that they're really that interested, right? In what you have. We found out that they have a problem that you know that you can solve. Now they know that you can solve it too. And they are leaned in and they are asking questions about it. They're wanting more details. They're wanting more information about exactly about this thing that you have that can help. And at this point in time, it's answering questions. I don't even like to call them objections. I like to look at them as questions because there's buyer questions, right? If you do this right, they're going to be asking questions about the offer because they're interested, because they want to buy it and, uh, or they want to invest in it or they want to work with you. And usually these questions are the last couple pieces of information that they need before they give you a credit card number. So what we do when they start asking questions, we don't get overexcited and start to tell them, answer their question and tell them everything else that's even related to it. If they say, wait, so you, you provide like customized support. Is it on calls? Yep, we're on calls. That's how I would answer that. Yep. Supports through calls and through the group. Like four words, <laughs> you know, and then they're like, okay, cool. How much, how much is the group? One ninety nine a month right now. Okay. And I don't say anything else after that. I'm, just, I'm waiting for them to keep answering questions. If they go away for like half an hour, if we're in DMs, then I'm still I'm gonna say, "Hey, you still there?" But if it's like, if, if it's been like two minutes, I know that they're thinking, they're calculating, they're so I'm just I'm letting them go through this thought process. And after like thirty minutes, I'm like, "Hey, you still there?" And then if they don't respond after that, I'm like, I would I would just say, "Hey." Do you want me to send you the link to this thing or, or not? Like, just let me know. Cool. I'm cool either way. I would literally send that. I'm not like following up with them, begging them to buy my stuff. I'm like, Hey, let me know if you like really want that help. I'll send you the link. You know, like I'm not saying that word for word, but that's the energy behind it. Hey, let me know if you like really want that help or not. Uh, cause like I'll help you, but I'm not going to like beg you to let me help you. 
you know i'm gonna go focus on the other people who actually want it i'm not saying that word for word but that's what the energy is implying by me saying hey like do you did you want the link to sign up for that or or no let me know i'm cool either way i say that all the time i even do that on zoom calls when i'm doing this on zoom calls i'm like hey i'm cool either way i'm letting lifting my hands up letting them know it's like this is very disarming i'm like i really don't care it's like like, I care about you and your results, but I don't care about making you get the results. I don't care about the results more than you do. I match your level of effort. And that's that's cool, you know? And so a lot of nuances here, right? Especially with closing the offer, depending on if you're doing it on calls, if you're doing it in, on, on, in DMs, um, if you have an affiliate link. An affiliate link, that's where you can just say, hey, like, cool, I got this thing. Um, that I know will help with that. Do you mind if I send it over to you? They say yes, and you send them the link. That's the that's a super easy one. But to review this, what we do here is we start the conversation. We get permission to sell or diagnose. We diagnose the problem. Then we recommend a solution. Caveat here, if the thing that you sell does not solve their problem, then you do not sell it. This is based off of being ethical, just being a good person. If the thing that you sell, if you get all this way and you find out that your thing does not solve their problem, you don't sell it to them anyways. Or if it looks like this thing would solve their problem if they were the kind of person that would take action on it, but it just seems like like all the all signs are pointing to red flags that, that they're not going to take action, then then do not enroll them in your thing. Um, I learned this the hard way. <laughs> so you don't have to. Hopefully you don't do that too. And this wasn't recently, but by the way, for anybody who's watching this that may be a client right now, I didn't learn this lesson recently, but I've learned this lesson in the past. So, um, Hopefully this was helpful for you and uh, let me know in the comments if it was and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.